Hello everyone, welcome to the ASA, ASA podcast. podcast! Today we are here with Alice Fu. Yay! Andrea Perez. Woo! And Savannah Patterson. Yay! In this episode, we will be discussing the Scarlet Letter and the significance of each chapter. Now, I, Savannah Patterson, will be discussing chapter 1 through 8. In chapter one, Nathaniel Hawthorne, the author, sets the scene of the novel in Boston during the 17th century. In this chapter, we see the decay and ugliness of the physical setting, which symbolizes the Puritan society. Um, I think this adds more of a gloomy effect to the novel, which um, I personally think makes the book more interesting. Now let's go over chapter two. Hester Prynne has been found guilty of adultery. She has born a child out of wedlock and is (gasps) in prison with the baby. As part of her punishment, she must stand on the scaffold, which is a raised platform, and be viewed by the townspeople. Oh my gosh. Shamed for her sin. The women in the crowd make disparaging comments about her, particularly criticize her for the ornateness of the embroidered badge on her chest, the letter A, stitched in gold and scarlet. We can deduce that the A on on her dress stands for adulterer. The townspeople criticize and stare as if her sin outweighs their own error. Mm -mm. This error was heavily influenced by the Catholic Church, and because of that, the people were often very judgmental. This scene really gave me a big picture as to why the townspeople back then were so incredibly judgmental. I mean, it's not their fault to be, like, very judgmental. Like, she sinned before, so I feel like she kind of deserves it, you know? Yeah, but, like, it just gives you a bigger picture as to, like, how... Um, conservative the time back then was. Yeah, it's very, like, pretty conservative, but conservative. I still feel like if that thing's happen right now, it's, it's still not gonna be, like, unforgivable. Like, people's gonna, like, judge you, you know? People are gonna judge you, but people not as heavily as what they did back then. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Now let's go over chapter three. In the crowd that surrounds the scaffold, Hester suddenly spots her husband, who sent <gasps> her to her. Yeah, who he sent her, her husband? <laughs> he is back. He is back. Who sent her to America, but never fulfilled his promise to follow her. Uh-huh. Hester's uh-huh. husband, whom we will learn in the next chapter, Roger Chillingworth, mm-hmm. gestures to Hester that she should not reveal his identity. He then turns to a stranger in the crowd and asks about Hester's crime and punishment explaining that he has been held captive by Native Americans and has just arrived in Boston. The, narr- the narrator then introduces us to the town fathers who sit in judgment of Hester, Governor Billingham, Reverend Wilson, and Reverend Dimsdale. Dimsdale. Dimsdale oh, is a young minister who is renowned for his eloquence, no. religious fervor, and theological expertise. Is delegated to demand that Hester reveal the name of her child's father. Oh. He tells her that she should not protect the man's identity out of pity or tenderness, but when she refuses, he does not press her further. The reason Dimsdale didn't ask further is because he is actually the baby daddy. Oh my gosh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. He is the Says baby daddy, so he does not want to the baby further. daddy. Ooh. Chill on. Ooh. Uh-huh. Over the course of this chapter, I think Hawthorne makes it clear that he admires Hester's strength and endurance in the face of... Of adversity. While she does feel fear, she does not show it at any of the crowd who would love nothing more to see her display some weakness. Oh my it just God. shows how strong she is. Yes. And during all of that, let's go over chapter four now. Hester and her husband come face to face for their first time when he is called to her prison cell to provide medical assistance. Ooh. He now offers her a cup of medicine, but Hester thinks that Chillingworth might be poisoning her. Ooh, uh, Chillingworth. But he assures her that he wants her to live so that he can have his revenge, implying that he plans to seek out her unknown lover. He Ooh. clearly has revenge on his mind. I think Chillingworth definitely feels anger and jealousy within because of the adultery Hester has committed. I think he feels betrayed, but still feels love for Hester. Aww. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of... He's hurt, good. but he, he loves her. He is hurt, but, like... He's really hurt. Because, like, he wanted to start that family, like... Yeah, he definitely <laughs> yeah, did. Yeah, he definitely does. But Hester? Uh-uh, girl. Hester lost feelings for him real quick. Because like, like, he's like, getting he real ugly. Him. He's getting real ugly, to mm-hmm. be honest. Let's go over chapter five now. In chapter five, the narrator covers the events of several years. After a few months, Hester is released from prison... Although she is free to leave Boston, she chooses not to. She is an outcast, but Hester remains able to support herself due to her uncommon talent in needlework. Mm. Despite her success, Hester feels lonely and is constantly aware of her alienation. I think Hester is slowly losing her beauty because she hasn't received any tenderness since Reverend Dimsdale. Uh, 
So, like, over the time, she's getting more, like, yeah. You know? I'm kind of surprised she's actually good at, like, needleworks. I thought she's not, like, doing anything. But, like, she's, like, trying her best and, like... She is trying her best. Mm -hmm. But Dennis, though, it looks like he's not going in the picture. I know. I know. He he, a, he, he, he dipped. <laughs> um, um, now, chapter six. Hester's one consolation is her daughter, Pearl who is described in great detail in this chapter, a beautiful flower growing out of sinful soil. Pearl is so named because she was purchased with all Hester had, her mother's only treasure, because in giving her existence, a great law had been broken. Hester loves but worries about her child. The other children are particularly cruel because they can sense that something is not quite right about Hester and her child. Mm -hmm. Knowing that she is alone in this world, Pearl creates... Um, characters in her imagination to keep her company. Pearl is fascinated by the scarlet letter and at times seems to intentionally torture her mother by playing with it. To be honest, I think Pearl's acting out um, is due to the lack of fatherly figure that she hasn't experienced. You know, surprisingly, she named her daughter Pearl. Like, what the heck? Like, why would you name a child Pearl? That's such a weird name. It is a weird, but like, it, it has sig significant meaning behind it. So I think yeah, Hawthorne I mean, is pretty smart with you know. Yeah. But and it is I'm, an odd name. I know. Very unique. And, like, when he mentions, like, she's so named because she was purchased with all what Hester has had. Yeah. Like, that's her uh, only treasure. I mean, I was kind of confused, but then now it's like, it kind of makes sense. It like, does make sense. Like, her only child. Like, that's what she all has. She so. played, she, she, um, paid a great debt for Pearl. Mm, and yeah. And so that's why Pearl is so, like, a, like, a, it's a, like a treasure, treasure to a her. A treasure. Yeah. Uh huh. The fatherly figure, like maybe she's like, she sees her other kids like with their dad, and she's like, hmm. Yeah, so she feels probably a bit of like hurt because she doesn't mm -hmm. have that fatherly figure. Yeah. yeah, that's what I think. Now on to chapter seven. Yeah, on their way to see the governor, Hester and Pearl are attacked by a group of children who try to fling mud at them. Isn't really? that so rude? Are you kidding that me? That is really rude. Smack like, them stop children. Doing that. Smack them. <laughs> stop doing that, kids. Don't I know. Do that. Don't throw mud. Okay. Pearl becomes angry and frightens the children off. She got a little spice in her. Oh, yeah. She's, she's, she's a little attitude. bit a little Ooh. bit of an attitude. So, in Chapter 7, I really do think Pearl is a very angerful child due to the fact that she hasn't received any tenderness, specifically from, like, a father. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that kind of, like... Or, like, you know, yeah. real strictness mm -hmm. that a father would give. Yeah. I mean, like, that's why you have families, like, a mom and a dad, and, like, you can't miss one. If you miss one, that's... Yeah, you're be... missing something. Yeah, you're like, yeah. missing something. And, and so, child's... I think Pearl's definitely, like, missing mm -hmm. a big chunk. <laughs> <laughs> now on to chapter eight. Bellingham, Wilson, Chillingworth, and Dimsdale enter the room. They notice Pearl and begin to tease her by calling her a bird and a demon child. <laughs> as what the townspeople usually call her, because she's crazy mm -hmm. um when the governor points out that hester is also present they ask her why she should be allowed to keep the child she tells the men that she will be able to teach pearl an important lesson the lesson that she has learned from her shame hester tells them that if she had not been able to keep pearl she would have gone willingly i personally think gone willingly implies that she would have killed herself is that a, oh is that a my reach? gosh i feel like that, that is kind of like ooh tea i think that makes sense though because like pearl is like so much of her life and if yeah pearl isn't there then hester's like you know alone mm -hmm. nothing to live for nothing to live for exactly <laughs> mm -hmm. wait the narrator notes that it seems pearl has saved her mother from satan's temptation which is the overcoming feeling of guilt and death. Ooh. Alice here, and I'll be talking about uh, chapter 9 to 16. Okay, so starting with chapter 9. In this chapter, Children Worth is kind of sneaky, you know? Like, mm -hmm. he's trying to hide his secret in the dark. He doesn't want anyone to know. And I also feel like he's really smart. He's a smart guy. He's trying to gain people's trust and make people to like him. I mean, like, in Crop Operating himself as a doctor is really a good idea. He knows that this is a small town and people don't really have access to good medication. Uh, one thing that brought my attention is that Dimstel was also in this chapter. And what made me shocked is that Dimstel 
seems to be a roommate of Chillingworth. <laughs> I know. Like, so that means like they live together. The baby right daddy now. and the husband are living Ooh. together. He doesn't know though. They he don't even know. know. That's mm. tea. That's so, that's so tea. Like literally, they became roommates. What? I know. <laughs> What's going on? I feel like Chillingworth is like about to step into Dimson's private life. He's about to dig in this man's secret. Like, he's a stalker. Mm-hmm. Stalking. I mean, Chillingworth maybe has like a thought about like, Dimson might be the guy who slept with Hester. He has a little bit of a sense. Yep. And he is definitely prepared to find out the truth behind it. Mm-hmm. So, hearing that they live together and all of this kind of dramas and scandal my happy in the future is kind of like the best part of this chapter. Mm-hmm. And I really wonder like, what's Chillingworth gonna do? When he found out that Dimsa is the guy that was with Hester. Yeah, I wonder. Mm-hmm. Is he gonna snap? Is Some he gonna real. Like, it's okay, bro. It's okay, bro. <laughs> Some real tea. We're besties now, apparently. <laughs> Alright, moving on to chapter 10. In the beginning, the narrator was mentioned that the old Roger Chillingworth was really a nice guy. Mm. I mean, that kind of makes sense. He was nice before that. Mm-hmm. Hester cheated on him. Mm-hmm. That means uh, something is like changing him right now. And all we know is that Hester betrayed him. I mean, oh, poor guy. I feel kind of bad for him. Mm. So now his new goal is to find out all the truth. Mm-hmm. Who, who's the guy? Who's the baby's daddy? Um, Who knocked up my wife? Hold on. <laughs> What's going on? It's supposed to be me. <laughs> <laughs> and it seems like he's really close to the truth. Mm-hmm. He has that kind of sense that maybe Chillingworth is the guy he's like looking for. Chillingworth mm-hmm. is smarty. Let's switch scene. They're in a room, and Hester and Pearl are like passing by, and I was like, ooh. Mm-hmm. Dimsdale and Chillingworth, Hester and Pearl, ooh. So I was like, what are your thoughts on that moment? Like, does Chillingworth feel awkward? Does Dimsdale feel like he needs to hide himself from the mm-hmm. situation? And Pearl was just fixing birds along the lines of the scar letter. And then she just threw it at Dimstone and I was like, oh my gosh, person's really annoying. She has no manners and is definitely disobedient. She is very disobedient. The funny part is like right after Pearl threw the thing at Dimstone, Hester looked up and saw Chillingworth and Dimstone. And they all look at each other with silence. Mm-hmm. Hester might be awkward to meet her husband that she cheated on and the man that she cheated with. <laughs> oh, no. So that's oh, like... Shoot. That's definitely That's mm-hmm. like former husband and the baby daddy. So after Hester and Pearl left, Chillingworth talked to Dimsa about his body disorder and he was forcing him to tell him what kept bothering him. It seems like Chillingworth is pretty sure that Dimsa is the guy and wants to hear the truth from his own mouth. Mm-hmm. Dimsa started like going off and that secret is sinful. It is messy and complicated. Mm-hmm. Of course, he doesn't want anyone to know. I'm pretty sure now Chillingworth wants to increase the suffering of Dinsdale. He wants that sin keep bothering him until he dies. Now that Chillingworth's really a demon, he's a devil now. He yeah. wants the revenge. Mm-hmm. He has the revenge, you know? His heart is filled with black. That's exactly. what it is. Yeah, exactly. Chapter 11. So, Chillingworth is planning a revenge in this chapter. He wanted to make himself suffer more. And I was like, okay, Chillingworth, okay. <laughs> Dinsdale and Hazard are in sin. Like a big one. But and then again, Chillingworth is as well for the revenge. But I, I mean, mean, yeah. But if the cheating did not happen, then why would he mm-hmm. revenge, you, you know? And plus, he had to find out from the town instead of Hester being like, oh, I'm sorry I cheated on I you. I know. That's the worst. Like, I know. Because of gossip, you find out. Uh huh. Like, that's so sad. Yeah, because I mean, if I were him and I found out that the love of my life mm-hmm. just had a baby with someone else, I would feel her and start thinking like, why this happened to me? I haven't uh-huh. done anything wrong or guilty to my wife and, any- and anyone else. So I feel like re- it's really understandable that children with wants something to happen to mm-hmm. Dimsdale mm-hmm. and Hester. That's, That's something true. bad to happen to them. Moving on to chapter 12. So Dimsdale went to the scarf where Hester had lived through her public ordeal. And I thought he was about to commit his sin and just say, oh, I'm sorry. People, I'm wrong. Like, I've done something really wrong. But you know what? He did not change at all. He only cares about his reputation. Mm-hmm. He was thinking that the whole time is going to come out and they're all going to find out why he's there and just make fun of him. Then Pearl and Hester appeared. Kind of scandalous. And they were heading back from the gardener's house. Then Pearl asked Dimsdale 
if he was staying with her and her mother tomorrow at noon. He said he was staying with them on the judgment day. Oh, sure. The judgment day. It sounds like, it sounds so familiar with the Bible. I know, right? Isn't it? The judgment day. That means someone's going to judge you real hard. Getting kind of Christian here now. Wow. And I feel like he's making some changes here. He's willing to admit his mistakes and take responsibility for them. He should. Mm-hmm. As he should. He changed kind of fast. At first, he doesn't want any town people seeing him standing there. But now he wants to stand with Hester and Pearl on Judgment Day. And I was like, okay, I'm seeing like some growth on Dimsdale right now. Mm-hmm. And Improvement. Mo- mm-hmm. And moving on to chapter 13. So Hester was shocked at how bad Dimsdale's con- condition has been reduced lately. She feel like his mental health is not doing really good right now. And he wants help, you know? He wants someone to help him. You know that? Poor Hester. She still have feeling for them still. So mm-hmm. she decided to help him out. And I just feel like Hester's been really a strong lady in the past seven years. She's really strong, but she's not smart enough. Like, girl, like, this guy left you. And you have to take all the consequences. I know. It's really unfair. And then the letter has done nothing for her and Pearl in seven years. Mm -hmm. Now that Pearl is seven, the town people start having like some respect for Hester, which is surprising. Mm -hmm. They even say things like, oh, maybe the A stands for able, or maybe the scarlet letter actually means she's holy. We're seeing some improvement Mm -hmm. in the society as well. I know. It must be good for Hester and the people that they're like, the town people are like changing their attitude toward her because they see her doing like hard work like she's working hard and they started having more respect for her which is great but Hester started thinking if it's worth it for her to be alive maybe poor will do even better in heaven oh shoot I was like mm, murder insane guys oops is she gonna curse her own child <laughs> She? That would be a little bit disturbing. What well, the answer was no. <laughs> she ends up not doing it. Kind of sad. Yeah, kind of sad. <laughs> but you know what? I kind of want to see her doing it. It makes me wonder how the story's Hold gonna on. go. Like it you, would make it a little bit more interesting. But I know, like you want to see how the story's gonna go, like in the end, if she actually does that. Yeah. What would what would Dimsdale do? Would he feel a little bit mad about that? Killing his child, even though he doesn't have a relationship with her. I have no idea. I don't know. Mm. Would the townspeople blame it on Hester, though? Be like, oh, she ate her own daughter. Something oh, no. Like <gasps> she ate her. She ate her. <laughs> mm. Ate her whole. Mm-mm-mm. And eventually, she decided to meet her former husband, Chillingworth. Ooh. Mm. She wants to find out, like, what is going on with Dimsdale. So in chapter 14, Hester can and talk to Chillingworth. And Chillingworth told Hester that the government would take off the letter A. I was like, oh, the government. And Hester thinks if she were worthy, it would fall out by itself. And she was shocked by the fact that how Chillingworth changed as a person. I mean, he changed into like a really desperate, greedy creature right now. Greedy creature? Mm-hmm. Greedy creature. He's a creature, guys. Uh huh. And of course, Hester thinks it was her fault that Chillingworth became evil. I mean, she's kind of right, though. She is right that children with become evil because of him. Mm-hmm. That's her. And then she begged children with to stop touching this doll. Aww. She kind of care. <laughs> okay. And of course, children with said no. Because he thinks this doll is the one who forced him to become a monster. I wouldn't like to go that easy too. Because Dimsa has like so many sins that you can't even count. At the very end, before he has to laugh, she asks him one more time for forgiveness. While well, the answer is still no, because he hates them. So in chapter 15, Hester found out that she hates Chillingworth. She despises him. But I kind of feel like, wait, what? Like, she hated him? Like, how though? She lost love for him. So she has yeah, no love like, him. She's the one who sinned first. So because she lost love for him. Yeah. I just feel like she's the one who betrayed him. So how can he it's like how can she still hate on him? In this chapter, Hester thinks that Chillingworth has done more wrong to her than what she has done to him. And also interesting. At the same time, Pearl is dressing herself up with the scarlet letter A on her chest. Surprisingly, Pearl actually know what the A stands for. Then Pearl asks why does Dimsdale keep himself his hand over his heart? And this is the first time that Hester liked Pearl. She was like, I wear for the sake of go through it. Oh wow. Chapter 16. Hester is going to find Dimsdale. She wants to reveal the true color of children's word. She was walking with Pearl and Pearl thinks that the sun is afraid of the scarlet letter. When they sit down, Pearl asks Hester about the story of the black man. The black man. 
She heard that everyone who encountered him has to write a name in his book in blood. Oh no. Oh, Vampire? Sure. Per overheard an old lady talking about this. The old lady says lots of people have written the name on the book. And she also mentioned that Scarlet was the black man's mark on Hester. I mean, it is kind of like a mark on mm-hmm. Hester. Hester admitted that she met a black man before and Scarlet was his mark. When they met this there in the wood, Per kept bothering her mother by asking tons of questions. I was like, stop it, girl. Like, stop asking questions. Go play around. She's so annoying. She's curious. Like, she's like, she's yeah, curious, but, but like, so, so annoying. annoying. So Hester just took her to go away five minutes later. And when she says this, though, he looks very depressed. Of course. Of course. Because Expected. children were, like, kept bothering him. And in the out of Hester, ex- <sighs> but except that Dimsa always have his hand over his heart. He exhibited no symptoms of Paul's suffering. I mean, that's kind of good. Hey guys, it's Andrea, and I'm going to be talking about chapter 17 of Scarlet Letter. So, Dim still, he comes to this forest, the one where the Wicked Witch was from. Mr. Wicked Witch? Yes. And he's thinking about life, and poof, Hester <laughs> out of nowhere pops in. She's like, hey. Hey, boo. <laughs> hey. And they literally plan to escape. They're like, we cannot handle this town. Like... <gasps> They're sick of it. The sin is just making us miserable. And then Hester tells Dimsel that Chillingworth is her husband. <gasps> like, oh my gosh, Hester! Miss Hester! Insane. They've been like, living under the same roof, Chillingworth and Dimsdale. Like, practically oh besties. My gosh. And now like, look at this. <laughs> awkward. I know. And literally, Dimsdale blames all his suffering on Hester. Like, the unhappiness, the miserable life. Hester is feeling attacked. Like, excuse me. Mm-hmm. When Hester's like, please, can you stay with me? Mm-hmm. Don't leave me. And he's like, fine, I'll stay. Because <laughs> Hester begs him to. And Dimsdale realizes with Hester that Chillingworth is the bad guy over here. Like, mm-hmm. with the revenge and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, Hester is grudge. blacker than Dimsdale's and Hester's. Like I said before. Like, Chillingworth just wants to reveal this, like, bloody scandal that mm-hmm. Dimsdale and Hester made a baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> made a baby. Ooh. But, like, Hester, she's not okay with that. Like, she wants Dimsdale and them to, like, figure out how to tell the town. Because this baby daddy's a mystery. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Now to chapter 18. So, they finally decide, Dimsdale and Hester, that they want to move to Europe. Oh, shoot. And Dimsdale's like, oh my gosh, I feel so happy. Like, I haven't felt this in a while because they finally get to escape the town. Of course he's happy. He's not going to see anyone yeah. that, like, know him. Mm-hmm. But, like, Hester, she, like, takes off her scarlet letter. She puts her hair down, like, turns all beautiful again. And Pearl is like, who are you? Like, Pearl does not recognize her mother. I know. Literally. M- Miss Beautiful Queen, who are you? What is this? And it's not until... Hester, like, puts her hair up and puts the scar letter that Hester, Hester's daughter, Pearl, is like, Mommy, you're here again. <laughs> like, what? Okay, that? I don't know why, but, like, I kind of found that annoying. Like, that is really annoying. She only sees her mother as this sad, gloomy woman. Like, stop it right there. I mean, like, it's true. Like, that's how yeah. she's seen, but, like, still. Exactly. Stop it right there. And Pearl, she joins Dimsdale and her mom, but she's kind of, like, sus about Dimsdale. She's like, mm. What's going on? Who's this? Basically, to run away from their problems, from their sin. And literally, Pearl is like, she wants to stay in the town. Like, we don't know. Mm-hmm. So, chapter 19. Hester calls Pearl to join her in Dimsdale from the other side of the brook. Pearl's eyes sees her parents, because, you know, Dimsdale and Hester parents, mm-hmm. and she's she's kind of, like, suspicious. She's like, what? Like, what? like who are these people? Yeah, like, like who, who is that guy? She Why are you with this man? Mm-hmm. And, like, she refuses to go with her mom. Like, she throws, like, a fit. She's like, I'm not going until the scarlet letter is on you. Like, oh gosh, my gosh. So that's annoying. so rude. And then, like, let her be quiet for a second. I know. Throw her in the lake. What the heck? And, like, literally... Hester tries to encourage Pearl to, like, embrace Hester. Like, this is your father. Like, be nice to him. And she's like, mm-mm. Like, mm-hmm. no. no, I don't recognize him. 
and um, Pearl tells her mom, she's like, will he go back with us, hand in hand, we three together in this town? Because Dim still will not, like, Pearl literally does not accept Dim still's kiss. She's like, I know he's not going to go with us. That's like, disgusting. Stop kissing, girl. Like, <laughs> I feel like, you know, because she's a kid and, like, kids can, like, see things sometimes better than adults, like. Yeah, that's uh-huh. kind of true. She's like. I feel what Dim still's feeling, and it's not good. Not good. Okay, chapter 20. So Dim still's thinking about this escape, but literally he has to tell a speech to the town. So he's like, uh, I don't know if I should go. Oh my gosh, make your decisions. Mm-hmm. And then Pearl's just like, just do it, and then after we can leave. And like, everything seems different to him now. Like, he's acting strange and like, He's now eating more than he should, like... <gasps> is Dim still on drugs? <laughs> like, this is... The... And then he goes back home with Chillingworth, and Chillingworth's like, here, do you want some food? And he's like, all right. And then he eat like... Dim still, like, instead of, like, sharing with Chillingworth, he just, like, eats it, and Chillingworth's like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And Mistress Hibbins talks to Dim still about meeting the forest. This is a witch. Mm-hmm. Like, she's like, you should come back. Mm-hmm. And, he won- and he wonders if he has just sold his soul to the devil. And that's why he's acting up. Like, mm-hmm. eat him alive. Oh my gosh. Like, Scandalous. And then he goes back home and Dim still literally refuses to get any medicine from Ch- Chillingworth. Like, he's like, I don't know what you're doing, your witchery, but you are making me crazy. Like, mm-hmm. oof. And literally... When he's alone, Dim still throws his sermon in the fire and starts a new one. So he's done with his speech. He's like, I cannot think. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, so let's see what happens. Chapter 21. Okay, so they're at this gathering place. Like, everyone's there, the whole town. Hester decides, okay, Dim still, let's go to Europe. So they're at this marketplace, right? And Hester, she's, like, imagining herself, like, Okay, I finally get to escape. And literally, she, comparing herself to now in the town, she's like, I'm so miserable here, I'm isolated. Oh my gosh, miss, stop it. And she <laughs> finds out that Chillingworth is planning to join them in the ship. Oh, uh, like, that's a little interesting. Chillingworth has told the captain that he's a member of Hester's family, and so he, he, Chillingworth's still planning to see Hester? Uh, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, Chillingworth and stop. Hester looks up to see Chillingworth standing across the marketplace, smirking at her. He's like, <laughs> Oh shoot. Ooh, getting kind of evil here. Okay, chapter 22. So, Dim still, he's now about to say his speech, and he looks at Pearl and doesn't even. and notices that Pearl doesn't even recognize him. She's like, Mm-mm, I don't see you. He doesn't even glance in Hester's direction. His behavior has caused her great distress because dim still you know he's all drugged up like he's not yeah, himself he drugged up <laughs> he does drugs stay away from there and dim still will soon reveal that he carries the black man's mark on his chest the one from the forest when the people stare at the scarlet letter on his chest so this is basically the part where he goes up and he's like i've sinned guys and everyone's all confused and he, like, gets off his, takes off his shirt, and you could see, like, it doesn't say in the book, but, like, there was a scarlet letter of his own, incarnated. Mm-hmm. Incarnated. And, everyone, and everyone's, like, confused. They're like, what? Like, we thought he was a saint. Like, I know, right? We the hypocrisy uh, of Dimsdale. And then, like, he Hester, he's a good guy. Mm-hmm. Hester comes up with Pearl. Ooh. Chapter 23. Okay, and then, so while Pearl and Hester are standing, Chillingworth tries to stop Dimsdale from confessing. Mm. He's like, no, I must do it. Oh, he wants to be the one who's doing this. Dimsdale. Chillingworth tells Dimsdale, there's no one place where thou couldn't (laughs) escape me. (laughs) So basically, like, he's like, don't do it. And Dimsdale... Dimsdale literally tells Pearl, I'm dying. I have to 
reveal the secret before I die. Like, oh my gosh, she died. So dramatic, but like, it's true. Like, it's complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he's like, Thou hast escaped me. And he like tells everyone, like, It was me. And everyone's like, <gasps> It was me, the baby it was daddy. Him. It was me. He is the baby me. daddy. He is the baby daddy. And Dim still s- tells Hester there's a possibility we might see each other in the afterlife. <gasps> Rest in God's hands. Oh my god, is he gonna end himself right now? I hope so. That's like kind of cute though. And Dim still dies. He yes. did! He really died! Yes. Yes. Oh no! Everyone's like, what just happened? Because <laughs> like, they don't know this drama. I know. People are confused. Yeah. Finish your job, Chino. I mean, Dimsdale. Okay, chapter 24. Okay, so the narrator gives several conflicting accounts of Dimsdale. So, like, some people believe that the minister had a scarlet letter on his chest, but we don't know. Because he had self-torture, blaming himself. That was the last chapter, and the author's telling whatever happens in the end. So, Chillingworth, he eventually, like, plans to escape, but then he dies. Cause yeah! He God's did. like, yeah, no more. Did. And ooh, ooh. Pearl, like, she literally goes to England... Or like, something like that, and she literally gets rich, meets a How husband. Became like, rich? How? She's living the good life. She really How? is. And then Hester, meanwhile, like she's like, I must stay in the town with the Puritans to see my sin, and she dies. Dang. Has to die. And that's a depressing life. And like they bury her next to Dimsdale, you know, because lovers. Oh my god, that's kind of I don't know. And they put like a symbol of an A, like the scarlet letter. You know what? Why oh can't they gosh. just leave the A behind them? Like they already dead. Yeah. Why do you have to add the A? That was stop doing that. Stop it. <laughs> have some respect for the dead people. If I was a ghost, I would call the police. Like that's so <laughs> annoying. That is all we have for today. See you next time. Bye. Woo! See ya.